The House of Representatives wants to investigate the activities and sources of funding of non-governmental organizations for possible culpability in the unending spate of insurgency in the Northeast. Now, this was part of the resolutions reached when a matter of urgent public importance on increased funding for the nation's security agencies was raised in the Green Chamber. The leadership of the House of Representatives on Monday, the 23rd of September, met with the service chiefs, the Director General of the DSS, and the Comptroller General of the Nigerian Immigration Service to discuss the current security challenges of the country. The Inspector General of Police and the Chief of Army Staff were, however, represented. Due to the reasons of the Chief of Defense Staff began his address by explaining the reason for failing to honor the initial invitation the previous week. My inability to be here in person last Friday was due to an equally urgent interaction at the presidency while the Chief of Army Staff was out of the country at that time. That notwithstanding, our various Chiefs of Operations were here to represent us. He then outlined the strides achieved in the fight against insurgency, which the speaker said was the reason for the meeting. The armed forces continue to re-strategize to address changing operational situation and tactics of the insurgent terrorists. We have achieved better integration of our land and air power, as well as greater coordination with other security and intelligence agencies through regular strategic meetings at the highest level of command and down to the chain of command. It's clear that you had have, you have made uh, giant strides um, over time. And that's why we're concerned that uh, these giant strides, uh, all of a sudden, uh, we seem to be, to be retrogressing. And that's why we called for this, for this meeting. The rest of the meeting was held behind closed doors and there was no briefing afterwards. As our last count, Mr. Speaker. However, the next day during plenary, the fallout of that meeting was presented as a matter of urgent public importance. I urge the federal government to create a special security fund for the security agencies apart from the national budget. Mandate the leadership of the House of Representatives to interface with parliaments of other countries especially the United States of American Congress with a view to overcoming all regulations that bar Nigeria's security agencies from purchasing arms and ammunition from those countries and the United States of America. While the lawmakers supported the motion for special funds for the security agencies aside the budget, they raised strong questions. In Dambua, I have 10 electoral votes, only one vote. It's not under the occupation of Boko Haram. This is as far as Chief Ok Dambuo goes a federal constituency is concerned. Chief Whip to the House can bear me witness. Out of the 10 local governments in Northern Borno, only two local governments, and there is only their headquarters, are still not under the occupation of Boko Haram. So the truth of the matter is if we are funding them, we must know exactly what are they going to do with the funds. About $385 million have been uh, 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 wired for the procurement of tanks and other ammunition. We're also aware that that money is trapped. And we are not going to have those weapons. You'll be shocked. Then the Deputy Speaker raised suspicion over the activities of non-governmental organizations and humanitarian agencies in the Northeast. Today in Meduguri, some NGOs have taken hotel for the purpose of uh, their activity, paying upfront for 10 years. And this is coming because there is some support for international community. Through the meeting we had, I want to believe there are some people who are deliberately sabotaging the effort of government, sabotaging the effort of our, our, our very gallant soldiers who are in the field to, to, to do their, their, their good job. The House resolves to investigate the activities and sources of funding of the NGOs, and according to the Speaker, they will be invited for a discussion. Now let's take a look at some other happenings in the House of Representatives during the week. The House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee, which is investigating the abandoned projects in the Niger Delta, finally meets the management of the Niger Delta Commission, 
which had failed to honor its first invitation a week ago. This committee. The managing director of the commission yeah, presented the commission. a summary of the project and financial profile of the commission from 2008 to 2018. Numbers of projects awarded, 9,820. Number of projects completed, 4,288. Number of ongoing projects, 2,645. Number of stall projects, 342. Approved projects, 2.8 trillion from 2008. Actual receipts, 1.8 trillion. Unlimited funds due NDC through ecological funds, 60 billion. We said banking crisis of 2006, which led to the revocation of what, what that the bank got to do with the activities. Some of the contractors we had, we gave a mobilization that had an APG with them, got into trouble, they couldn't ascend the fund. So that also stored some of the project. It used to happen sometimes to where the person might apply for further advances to help push the project forward. It is very possible. So I want to please allow us to go back, but I know that we have not paid this money on account of job done. No. The injustices. A community leader from the Niger Delta appears visibly upset. There has to be a major equity, that is the law. What has been done to Biafra, what has been done to become, what has been done to Boni, what has been done to Shoku, the gas producing areas from where they got hundreds of billions. I demand it that as they go back, they then go and find, you know, this uh, fit all those places. This honorable committee invites all past MDs, including the immediate one, the executive director of finance and project, to appear before this committee on Friday. Also during the week on the review, lawmakers in the House of Representatives called on the federal government to complete the rail connection to the dry ports and seaports in the country. The lawmakers believed that development of the dry ports will improve the country's export capacity. The House notes that the establishment of inland dry ports, otherwise known as inland container depots and container freight stations by the Nigerian Shippers Council is highly commendable and could lead to economic development of the nation. The House also notes that the inland dry ports, which is the equivalent, the inland dry port, which is the equivalent of a seaport located in the interland, receives containers by rail or road from seaport for examination and clearance by customs and other competent authorities. The House is convinced that the completion of these seaports will stop the diversion of cargo to neighboring countries, which is depriving the country of the much needed revenue, and will also generate employment for Nigerians, as in communities where those inland dry ports are sited, and will further reduce the contestant being experienced at legal ports and the gridlock on the Apapa Road. Meanwhile, a bill for an act to repeal the Fire Service Act of 2004 scaled second reading in the House of Representatives. The motion, which was sponsored by Representative Dachong Bagos, the motion sought to change the name from the Fire Service to the Fire and Rescue Service to enable the service carry out rescue services and not just firefighting. If we give our fire service the backing, the support, that it shouldn't just be fire service, but let it be another rescue organization that can lead the issue of emergency in this country. And the bill will give them power that in as much as they look into the issue of fire, they can even go ahead again to rescue a lot of situations within and around the country. And finally, one of the items up for debate during Thursday's plenary was a motion calling on the Independent National Electoral Commission to implement Section 78, Subsection 72 of the Electoral Act. Failure of any political party to win at least one seat in the National Assembly or the State House of Assembly will result in the registration of the said political party. Concern that the, since the commencement of Section 78.72, this Act has not fully been implemented. 
given the rising number of political parties in Nigeria. The Supreme Court has made pronouncement in National Conscience Party Basu Ainik square to the pronouncement, interpretation of that law, that INEC does not have the power to deregister political parties because it is in clear violation of the constitution that gave people the freedom of association. I, I am very much intended with him. The primary function of a legislator is to make law. When it comes to interpretation, we cannot be the one to say, okay, this is the way to do about it. And then enforcing the law is not also themselves in our own jurisdiction. Another lawmaker raised the point of order in support of the motion, but the deputy speaker disagreed. Even INEC is complaining that incumbent by some of these uh, 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 provisions, let us know why it is not being put into effect. The best way to cure, if the Supreme Court judgment had made a statement, is for us now to come back here amend the law and take it back. You can't, you can't go th through the back door to achieve that one. It's not possible. I would rather beg you, sir, to step down this motion, uh, allow us further input, study. The motion was eventually stepped down. The House of Representatives has now adjourned till Wednesday, the 2nd of October, due to the observance of the country's independence on Tuesday, the 1st of October. Now this is where we draw the curtains on this week's edition of The Gavel. If you have any views on any of the issues discussed, please email us on thegavel at channelcv.com. Thank you for staying with us and see you again next week.